Let's make sure you have all the right components. Grab your handle, a screwdriver, the circuitry that we sent you, and then the optional foam gasket. Your keypad might look a little bit different depending on the style you have. Remove your handle from the door and place it face down on a flat surface. Remove the five keypad screws. If you don't have an additional foam gasket, you'll want to be careful as you work around this one. Steady and firm pressure to the screws will help to prevent stripping. Set them aside because we're going to need them soon. Unplug the cable that's connected to the speaker board. Pull gently against the cable and the keypad will pop out of the casing. If yours was molded together, this will come out as one component. If you have the other style, a cap will pop off and reveal the keypad itself. Either way, we're on to the next step. If you were sent a new speaker board, we'll need to remove the old one. Start by removing the two screws and set them aside. Pop the speaker board out of the grooves and remove the small cable that it's attached to. Be super careful, these speaker boards are sharp. Let's get that new speaker board in place. Reattach the cable carefully. A firm press will click it into place. Line up the speaker board into the grooves. Grab your screwdriver and the screws that you set aside and reinstall. Any screw that we adjust during this whole process should be secure, but not over tightened. Now we're ready to install that new keypad. We will first need to attach the small cable into the side of the speaker board. Properly align it and apply firm pressure to click it into place. Be cautious not to pinch any wires while you align the keypad into the grooves. Grab the five screws that we took out from the beginning and reinstall. Just like we talked about before, all screws should be secure, but not over tightened. If you were sent a new foam gasket, peel off your old one and press and seal the new one down. Let's move on to installing the main circuit board, the PCB. If this is the only board you're installing, all that you'll need is the screwdriver. Start by removing the two screws on your battery compartment. We will use these same screws to reinstall in a few minutes, so set them aside somewhere safe. Slide out the cap to reveal the battery compartment. Remove the four AA batteries and set them to the side. If you need to replace the batteries, now's a good time to do so. We will then remove the two small screws that are on the inside of that battery compartment. Remember, these are tiny screws and we're going to need to use them again, so be really careful about where you set them. To get the screws out easier, make sure you apply firm pressure to that screwdriver as you turn. Next, we need to remove the entire battery casing from the handle. Grab your screwdriver and apply firm pressure against the on-off switch. This will begin to shift the battery compartment. From there, we will alternate pressure on both ends of the handle and use the cable to pull it upwards and slide it out of the grooves. Now we can see the current PCB. Gently remove the cable from the casing and unplug the red and black wiring that is attached to the board. Set the original PCB aside while we prepare to install the new one. If the receiver was misaligned during the installation, you'll simply slide that back into the groove so the wiring points upwards. Grab the new PCB and we're going to reverse all the steps we just made. You'll plug it into the attachment that's on the board until you hear a slight click. The cable will feed back through the battery compartment casing. The circuit board alignment is very important on this next step. Be sure to get the board directly into the grooves in that battery compartment. Adjust the red and black wiring as well as the other cables to prevent anything from getting pinched in between that circuit board and the wall. Once that's secure, we'll slide the battery compartment back into the interior handle casing. With the cable feeding through the back, we will snap the battery component back into place. After installing, your on-off switch might be off-centered. If that's the case, grab your screwdriver and pull it towards the center. That should fix it. From here, we will grab those two tiny screws and reinstall them back into the battery compartment. Make sure you have good batteries and plug them in. After all four batteries are in place, confirm that the cables and the wires are not being pinched. Reinstall the battery compartment cover. Slide it into the grooves and grab those two screws that we set aside towards the beginning. You may want to hold that cap in place while you secure the screws. The screws should be secure, but do not over tighten to prevent unwanted pressure. Great work, you've installed all the circuitry. Now let's connect the front to back and test it to make sure everything is running properly. Once connected, you should hear the welcome chime. Confirm you have power and let's set up your code. Using a small tool, press and hold the code reset button for about 15 to 20 seconds or until the handle responds. Type in your new code and press lock. And then we'll do it again. Your new code and press the lock symbol. From here, the handle will verify that your code has been accepted. 
Give it a test to make sure your new code works. Now let's move on to the fob. Anytime you'd like to use the fob remote, the switch needs to be in the on position. Quickly click the fob learn button and press the first lock button on your fob. To connect the second set of buttons, we'll repeat the process. Quickly click the learn button and then press the other lock button on the fob remote. If you'd like to connect multiple keyless entry systems, you can sync them to the buttons accordingly.